Hey everybody, Darlington Farm here. I got a fun video for you guys this week. We're going to be doing some pulsed MIG welding, some double pulsed MIG welding, uh, some TIG welding, and we're doing this to build up uh, this Polaris snowmobile transmission. This is uh, going to be used by a local university at a uh, design competition where they're changing the snowmobile from a two-stroke gasoline engine to a diesel engine. Uh, I've had to rearrange the transmission where I, you know, cut some gears out of it, remake some new gears, I had to uh, bore this one of these guys out, put some splines in there. It's been kind of a project and I'm kind of excited about it and I'm excited to bring you guys along on this portion of it. All right, so what we're doing here is we're just tigging around the perimeter of the area that I wanted to build up. I uh, really wanted to start off with TIG on this just because I didn't know how well the casting was going to weld. So just kind of wanted to take it slow and not potentially destroy it. I think midway through I had to adjust the settings on my dynasty here. I just changed the frequency from around, I think it was 120 hertz down to about 80 hertz. Just to kind of let the puddle flow out and kind of soak into the casting there. So I started out using 4043 filler wire. That's kind of my go-to filler for uh, castings. Usually you have pretty good luck with it, but on this time it didn't work out real well. I had a lot of scum and just kind of crud floating around in the puddle. I ended up switching to 5356, which has actually kind of become my new favorite aluminum filler wire. Uh, it's really clean and actually just really a nice filler. It's worth giving it a try if you've never used it before. I really like how easy the menu system is in this uh, HDP Pro Pulse. Uh, we're using MIG 2T and then you, once you select your job there you can go ahead and select a uh, predefined program. In this case we're using 4043 wire double pulse but there's a 4043 single pulse, there's a 5356, 5554, uh, just all kinds of different ones here. We've got mild steel. Uh, we've also got programs in here for stainless steel, silicon bronze, and this flux cord one right here uh, works for dual shield flux core. I've used it. It is awesome. Uh, but in this case, we're going to use 4043035 double pulse. So you just select, and then we're set up. You can select your uh, arc length here. Uh, I've any, run anywhere on this, just messing around with it from minus two all the way up to about plus one. Uh, your thickness is up here. And then as you run the slider on the gun, that changes both your voltage and your wire feed speed. Kind of a output, you know, kind of changes your output power on it. So it's a pretty neat machine. Let's go ahead and get it set up here and get it running. If you have ever used a spool gun on aluminum before and been frustrated, this is not that process. This is a very controlled, very precise process. It really lets you control the amount of metal going out there and where it's going. Uh, the slider setup on that HTP welder is really impressive. If you are coming to the edge of a weld or it's starting to get a little too hot and out of control, you're not going to have any problems just backing off the heat, running the slider down there. It is almost as controllable as TIG using a foot pedal. It's really, really an impressive process. The only downside I can possibly see is the potential brain damage from listening to that noise for hours on end. Definitely something you're gonna wanna wear earplugs for. And uh, yeah, it does get to you after a while, but it, uh, it's worth it for the end result.
right, so as you can see here, I got this guy filled in. Not the super prettiest thing in the world, but I'm not going to complain. Does what they needed to do, and uh, we'll get on to the next task. All right, so we got our gear case welded up. I'm really, really impressed with how well that HTP welder does. That's the Pro Pulse 220. Uh, I've never done any pulse MIG welding before, pulse on pulse. Uh, that pulse on pulse program there just lays it in there. You can almost watch the droplets just shoot off there and right into your puddle. You know, you can run it up, you can run it down, you can run it side to side, any position there. Doesn't matter, it just is kind of like a squirt gun for metal. I'm really impressed with it. I'm going to do some more videos with that guy here, but we're going to go ahead and get on to the next portion of this where we got a machine out another gear here so what we're doing is we have one of the shafts that goes in that housing uh, there's a smaller gear there this is a 48 tooth i think that other is a uh, 20 some tooth 27 tooth anyway so what we're doing here is we've chopped the 27 tooth off the shaft here i've got it mounted in my rotary table this is just a 16 inch rotary table. Uh, I've got a three jaw chuck on here with some soft jaws in it for holding small parts like this. We're just gonna go ahead and mill out the center of that. Now I tried doing this on the lathe, but this shaft material is really, really hard and I ended up having to use a carbide end mill. Uh, tried a regular high speed steel end mill and it just said no. So we've got a carbide end mill in there. I took a few test cuts and I think it's gonna work out okay. So we've got a bore out the center of this guy here we'll go ahead and make it the right diameter and then we've got to make four cuts here uh, for a dog from the or another portion of the transmission that in, that engages with this basically it's just four little cuts there where there's like a, a shifter deal i don't know exactly know what it is but basically engages there or disengages depending on what gear you're in or whether it's reverse i haven't really looked at it but anyway we got to make four cuts around there to where there's a little dog that engages with it what we're doing here is we're making that initial hole in the part. I've got it uh, chucked up in the rotary table there. We're using the drill to just spin the part. And I've got the hand wheel there where I'm just slowly lowering the tool bit down into the part. Uh, I've got it set up with my Noka mister there. It just kind of blowing a mist of coolant on it because that part is really hard. You can run a file over it and it just skips over it like it was nothing. But that carbide end mill just eats through it like it's nothing. You just have to take a really light cut and try and avoid, you know, chattering it. And yeah, it worked out really well. I was really pleased with the surface finish. All right, so I've got my Sterrett uh, Last Word indicator in here. That's a pretty neat little kit where basically you stick it in the spindle of your machine uh, and then you can move your X and Y table here around to the point where you have basically no movement on your gauge here, then you know you are in the absolute center of whatever part you have on your table here. All right, so on the back of this gear here, there are four slots for this dog to engage. What we have to do is make those on this gear here. So what we're gonna do, uh, I've measured this and then found where I need to have the center line for my holes. So what I've gone ahead and done is just cranked my table here to the proper offset to where I'm an inch and 32 thousandths back from the center line of the hole here, which should give me the center line uh, of my uh, dog slots here. So we're gonna go ahead, use a carbide drill, just drill some start holes here, and then we'll come in with an end mill and just clean it out. And then if everything works right, this should be centered on the gear there and everything should just work. All right, so for my first pass around here, I just peck drilled very lightly to just double check the locations of my holes here. Everything looked good, so I just came around again, drilled to my proper depth, came in with the end mill here, cleaned the slots out, no big deal, worked perfect. All right, so we got a nice fit up of our uh, dogs with our uh, gear here. Uh, I'm gonna go see about putting the transmission back together here. I'm not sure how much of that I'm supposed to do because that's supposed to be for students to, you know, figure out, but we'll see what we can do here. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. They opted to have the students do all the reassembly on the transmission there, so I just put everything in a box. They came and picked it up. I'm trying to do some more videos like this, try and get some uh, longer format videos out here where I kind of take you guys through the whole project. This is just something that I needed to get out the door this week. Videoed as much as I can and wanted to share with you guys. Uh, I'm gonna try and get these videos up to where I can actually teach you guys something. Um, you know, there's a lot of videos out there about, you know, specific welding process, this or that, but I'm hoping I can kind of show you how 
how to do a project like that and kind of maybe add some value, something out there that you're actually going to be able to use uh, in your, you know, in your shop, at your job, whatever like that. So anyway, I'm Darlington Farm. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Uh, please give it a like, thumbs up, uh, and hit that uh, bell down there to let you get notified when I pop up with a new video here. Also, um, hit my hit up my Instagram. It's at a cozy gun. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please leave a comment down there for any videos that you'd like to see specifically. I've already got ideas for the uh, uh, you know shop talk videos. Uh, also on you know what to look for when buying a lathe or other machine tools. But if you got any other ideas, things you'd like to see, just you know put it down there in the comments and let me know. I'm Zach. Thank you for watching.